Hey guys, Toby Mathis here, and today we're going to talk about a topic I wish we weren't talking about, which is how to protect yourself in the event of wars or wartime. I'm going to start by just saying this. That his, history tends to show us a lot of things about human beings and their nature and what's going on. One of the things that history shows us about wartime and investing in assets is that it's a 100% chance of recovery using historical uh, data. In other words, every single time there's a major outbreak of, of conflict in the world, every time there's a war, every time there's social unrest, all these times, even black swan events like the pandemic, every single time in history, the markets have bounced back. But how do we handle the in-between? And by the way, when it bounces back, I think the longest period of time was about 300 days. Generally speaking, in any year there's a major pullback, the S&P ends up higher. Every year, every time. And it could be a 30% pullback, it could be a 10% pullback, it could be a 20% pullback. But what you need to do is protect yourself in the event there is a pullback. Now, first off, you should absolutely be investing. There's an old adage, when the missiles are in the air, buy missiles. It's this horrible thing to say, right? You look at it and go, wait, that seems counterintuitive. And that's because if a massive, massive World War III breaks out, it's not going to matter anyway. But more than likely, it's going to get resolved without the annihilation of the human race, without the annihilation of our economy, and we're going to be just fine. So what you do is when there's fear in the world, that's the time to be a little bit greedy. It's counterintuitive. It's being contrarian. But Warren Buffett put it actually in one of his letters to shareholders at Berkshire Hathaway. He said, when others are fearful, be greedy. When others are greedy, be fearful. If you follow just that bit of advice, you'd be way better off nowadays. So we're in a time of fear. So this is the time to be looking out and looking to invest to make sure that you're protecting yourself. Because one thing that we know for certain, that inflation isn't going away anytime soon and that your money, your cash is sitting out. Let's, I'm just going to put it this way. Your cash is ice. Think of it as a frozen block of ice and it's sitting out in the sun right now. Inflation is a blazing sun and it's melting your money at the pace of about 10% a year. Your cash is sitting out in the sun. So you want to put it in something that's impervious to the sun, right? And that means you're going to have to look at things that don't get impacted by high inflation. And that's going to be like, let's just be real. They're going to have to attack inflation by raising interest rates. Interest rates, it's like gravity to matter. If there's low interest rates, companies that should not be bounding high, bound high. When, when there's low interest rates, people are going in and buying investments that they otherwise wouldn't buy, right? Because money's so cheap and it's causing them to get a little greedy. And remember, when other people are being greedy, be a little fearful. So what you want to do is buy things that are going to last and be successful regardless of whether there's free money. So you look at things that are not dependent on debt. You look at companies that are profitable no matter what the cycle is. And again, let's look at history. We had a, a, a century where there was two major world wars, multiple other wars, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, the Gulf War. We had presidents assassinated. We had a, a major pandemic even in that century. And the Dow went up thousands of percent. We're going to be fine in the markets. Real estate's going to be fine. So when you're in a cycle like this, where do you go? You go to the markets and you go to real estate. I don't know another way to make it simpler. But if you want to be okay in the long run, do not be sitting on cash. You want to have an emergency fund six months, but you don't want to be sitting on a ton of cash because it's out in the sun and it's melting. Now let's talk about the other threats to your assets during the same period of time. And if you've lived through the last great recession, you know what I'm talking about. 
people tend to get desperate when things start to pull back and they get a little freaky. And when I say freaky, they start doing things that they wouldn't otherwise do. They start to panic. And one of the things that you see is that people that ordinarily wouldn't do something and you would say it's out of character, they start to do that thing that seems to be out of character. What you see is a lot more lawsuits. You see a lot more disputes. You see people envious of other folks and they start trying to take. The best thing you could do, make sure your insurance is, is, is all current. Make sure that you have an umbrella policy. Make sure that, 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 to me, that is lawyer insurance. It'll pay for the lawyers to make sure that you can defend yourself in the event anything happens. And by something happening, somebody could make a really bad mistake and they could start to panic sell. And if your partner's with that person, they're taking you with them. And if they start to make really bad decisions because they're fearful, and they, it's, it's almost like a drowning person, and they start to drag you down or something occurs, and they, they've had, they, they thought they were hedging, and they get into some really bad investments, and they start to really suffer, and they start to take you down, that you have something there to protect yourself. And then, by all means, please, 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 the third one's the big one is make sure that you actually have an asset protection plan to isolate your assets so that no matter what happens in any particular area, that it's isolated from the others. It's just bulwarks, right? It's just making sure that if there's a, I hate to use this analogy because we're in wartime, but let's just say that a torpedo hits the boat that you can lock off that area and make sure it doesn't sink the whole vessel. And so if you're in real estate, We just went through a pandemic, and you guys know what I'm talking about if you've been a landlord during the pandemic. There's some groups that just said, hey, I don't have to pay. The information that they had out there was, I'm not going to pay. You got your money, like you've been getting your money because there's lots of social programs that were set up, but it took a while to get it. You just have to be able to stomach that. And if it fails, if there's a complete failure in the marketplace, you can isolate off that asset and said, I'm willing to lose this portion to save the rest. And that's just using trusts and LLCs and corporations as we teach day in and day out. Between those things, regular insurance, making sure that if you're a professional that you have a good you know, because I'm just telling you that there's there's people that you thought, oh, that's no big deal. You know, you get into a little car accident. I remember this. I remember this from a client. They had a little fender bender in a just one of those little lines in the bank. You know, they're going through drive through. It was a company van. Nobody thought anything of it. Uh, Oh, hey, we're not hurt. Don't worry. A year and a half later, guess what? Big lawsuit. Oh, I got really hurt. I had to go to the doctor. I still can't move my neck. That stuff happens. Make sure you have insurance to make that nonsense go away. Make sure that you have an umbrella policy so that you don't come out of pocket for attorneys. I've seen this. I had a client who came to us too late. But they, they built kind of their dream house and they went ahead and rented it to a nice family that they thought was a nice family. The family flooded the downstairs. Not only did they mess up the house, but as a punchline, they sued the client for mold because they flooded the downstairs and it got wet. They didn't tell anybody. They even tore out the carpet. Well, the client ended up winning at trial, but it cost them over $250,000 to get there. And of course, they go back after the tenant, the tenant just files for bankruptcy. Nothing happened to the lawyer who took the frivolous case. Nothing happened, but they got shook down for uh, for $250,000, which can leave a divot. So that's why you carry that umbrella policy. That's why you carry good insurance, because you don't want to come out of pocket for that. that. If you get shook down, if you have that frivolous suit, you want to be able to defend it. And then what we've learned over the last couple of decades as if people don't know, you don't, if they don't know what you have, if they can't see it, if you're using the privacy protections that we teach, you don't get sued. You know who else doesn't get sued? The homeless guy, right? Because the perception is that there's nothing to get. If the perception is that there's something to get, then you're probably going to be inviting inquiry and you're going to invite those issues. You just want to have the plan. And it's three prong regular insurance. Umbrella policy, asset protection plan. Between those three things, you can make yourself impervious to this nonsense. And here we are in a situation where people are getting fearful and they start doing things they wouldn't otherwise do. They start feeling that pressure or they get that fear or that paranoia 
And that's usually when these things come out. That partner, that business partner that you never thought would abscond with money or, do, or would drain the account does something silly. Or that partner that you thought was a good person, that you were on good terms, decides that, hey, I'm gonna, that they're going to try to m- make a race for some of your money. They get jealous or envious of what you have or what they perceive that you have. Or an ex-spouse comes along and says, hey, I don't think I'm getting enough. I'm feeling the pressure. Gas is doubled, right? And I'm feeling this financial pressure, so I'm going to try to get something from you. you got to put these things in place. And by the way, even in that situation, there are entities that are impervious even to alimony, even to child support. Again, this isn't something you use to avoid something that you actually owe. Please, don't get me wrong. This is not for fraudsters. This is not for somebody trying to put the screws to somebody. But what this is, is these are tools that you can use to make sure that if somebody comes after you, that you can minimize that damage. And that's what it's all about, is getting cheap settlements or keeping frivolous suits from ever occurring so that you don't have to deal with that nonsense. And then going back where do I, where I started is when you are in a situation where there's a lot of fear out there in society, that's when it's time to be an investor. When the missiles are in the air, you buy missiles. If you like this type of information or you think anybody could use this information to help themselves, please share it. Please subscribe so that we know you automatically get notified and you like click the little bell. So subscribe and click that little bell and you get notified whenever we put things out. There's going to be more activity. So we are going to be continuously putting out content. Expect that our Congress is not going to waste this opportunity to pass more things to, to say, hey, we need to tighten our belts and you need to give more. We need to raise them taxes. We need to do this. Expect that. We will let you know when there's things on the horizons and what you can do to minimize the impact of what these folks do. Again, when there's disruption in the world, it's usually a situation where those who have investments, you got to be a little careful to make sure that you don't expose yourself and it's a good time to go shopping.